Hey guys, good morning. This is a video update for a viewer that commented on my 375 Raptor video. He wanted me to make an update. Um, I was going to make one while back, but got too lazy and forgot about it. So here it goes. Hopefully the video is not too long. Um, this is my first... Um, my first round when I, when I started low development for the 375 Raptor. Um, in reality, there is no low data. Um, there is some at their webs at their website. I mean, the best resources for everything for this caliber is at their website. Everything is in there from people you could contact for certain tools being made, um, any kind of formation, to choosing your barrel, all of it. It's it's in there. I mean, I was in that website constant every day, taking notes, just to get familiarized with this caliber. Their load data is there, but it's on the high side for me personally. Because they're using Winchester brass, if I'm not mistaken. Um, their low development was they used Magnum primers for all their low data. Will it work with regular large rifle? I don't know. I haven't tried it. So I stuck what they came up with. Um, they're using Winchester Brass, if I'm not mistaken. Winchester Brass seems to have a little more case volume. I'm using PPU Military Brass. Um, when I did this brass, I actually annealed it first before I did anything. Um... The, and what I have found for me is the case will split if you don't kneel it. So every time I fire, if I go to the race today, once I clean this brass, I anneal it. I anneal it after every firing. Because I've noticed I don't anneal it on the second firing, the case splits. So just to preserve these these cases, I anneal it after every fire. And that seems to be working for me. Um, my first, the bullet choices, they have a lot of it there. Um, different brands, some of them are very costly. What's pretty decent in price, now they're expensive, but at the time is Sierra 250 grains. So um, I went with that for my starters so I came up with um, the powder wise I'm using reloader 7 um, they have no data for this reloader 7 but it's on their list on the powder they have tried and uh, but there's no data there was another one they have tried I think there's two more but I guess they wasn't too happy with it, so they went with the other powder manufacturers. But for me, it worked. So Reloader 7, 36 grains. For this round, for me, 36 grain is my max. Um, and the primers are pretty decent. I'll go any higher, I'm going to start cratering the primers. So a 36 grain is perfect. And it performed good too with 36 grains. Um, my overall length for me is 2.721, you know, from, from tip to base. And then here, hopefully you can see it. Let's see if I can bring it on and get out of camera here. This is my, my groups here. Um, I saved, uh, the chart. I, I should have done to the other, but I didn't here. Um, I don't know if you can see it. But here goes my first shot, and then here goes, I think there's two in here, and two here. So it did pretty nice group here. They could be perfect all in here, but since I tend to shake a lot because I have nerve damage. So I tend to shake a lot, so it affects all this. 
but for me this was perfect and this was Sierra 250 grains and what I came up with I have notes for all this here on the side my velocity was 2116 with 36 grains of powder and um, and it's perfect then I went to um, my next one um, the cast bullet that took me a while I thought I was gonna get cast bullet work with this but I did uh, these are all dummy rounds by the way this is my other one here um, the bullet that worked for me as cast is the Lyman 375449 the bullet is about this deep right here and this is another one there was no low data for this when there's no low data you gotta be very careful um, what worked for me it was accurate 5744 same thing I went with Winchester Magnum primers the overall length for this is 2.250 and this all this was in a hundred yards even with the Sierra it was a hundred yards and uh, the velocity for this was if I wrote all this down it was around here somewhere here you go so I went with uh, 30 yeah no wrong sheet where did it go ah never mind it's in front of me oh my it's 23.6 grains of accurate 57.44 and the velocity was 1691s at 100 yards so that's good to me there and I was perfect everything else was all you know kind of open this is the one that got to close the most so for a cast bullet for that it's not bad at all I um, if you could find a cast bullet that's shaped nose wise like this you could get something like this in cast but I didn't at the time and this worked for me so it was fine but yes, the bullet sits in the deep in here. And it shoots great. I, I like it. The recoil is perfect. It's very happy with it. Like I said, I thought I was going to get a cast bullet work with this rifle. Because the amount of room, it's... Um, you can hit the rifling very quickly with this. That's um, It's very close tolerance. Then... I my next one was jacket at all so I don't have a, a the cardboard but you see this here's all my shots right here now this here could have been better but this was my fault on uh, um, I had my uh, parallax set to 50 yards instead of a hundred and this was a hundred at a hundred yards so I kind of thought I get to hit paper even though it was set for 50. But it would have been better. I would have gotten more centerized. But it's okay. I know that part was my fault. And I know it's, it's accurate. This here was Reloader 7 also. Uh, same thing. Winchester Magnum. The overall length here. This is a spear. Um, spear 235 grains. And the overall length on this was 2.677. This is the length I got here. And it's 36.1. The, thus the uh, Sierra, I was 36 grades. And the velocity here was 2106. The velocity with the Sierra was 2116. So, you know, it's not too far apart. Yeah, 2116, I got 2106, which is not bad at all. Not too far apart from each other. I do have heavier bullets, but I stopped here on the low development. You know, I'm happy with these three for now. Uh, the heaviest bullet I have is 275 grains. And um, 
I mainly use shoot a lot of cast bullets, but I have these backup just in case. You know, when I, if I go hunting, I'll take the jacket up with me instead of the cast. Uh, but yes, there is no low data. That's something that you have to be very careful with. Um, if you have access to use um, quick of someone that has quick loads or um, Gordon reloading tool, that's another program. It's almost like quick loads. You'll be able to work something in there, you know, with this. But you know, being careful. Um, it's your website's your best friend. They they cover everything in there for that caliber. Um, these are this was mine. Data mine, you know, overall length, and that's what's worked for me. And this is taking measurements over a few times, you know, just to make sure I'm I was happy with it. You know, I do the dummy round and cycle it. You know, just to make sure that. Everything function perfect, and um, I don't know what else to say. I mean, if you have any, I mean, I keep a lot of notes. If you see a lot of a lot of notes here, for you know everything I've done. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not. See, I I keep extra notes that I do. My you know case capacity, my my headspace. My trim length is always 1.865. Um, my headspace for my rifle is 1.589. If I go like uh, 90 or 91, um, it's very hard to close the bolt. 89, it's um, it's like right there, and it's in and it's perfect. Um, this is my reading for a bolt action. Um, you, if you're doing an AR, you best bet pick up a case gauge. Um, can't remember the name of the company who makes it. You can find it also at the website. And this is, has your high and low here for the for the uh, for your head spacing, and then no. Sorry, this side for your head spacing high and low, and this side is your trim length, your minimum, your max. Yeah, but I don't, I don't use this part. I just use the the trims, the trim man to see if I have to trim the brass or not. But the I don't use this part because um, I'm on bolt action. But if you're in the AR, it's good to have one of these because you can't do it like you do in a bolt action. And um, I think that's it. That's all I have. Um, if you have any other questions, I'm more than welcome to answer anything you like. Um, yeah, I think that that's all I have. I can't think of nothing. I don't think I missed anything. I say your the, their website is the best place to go. They cover everything. You know, to who to contact, um, brass, you know, um, there's no one, oh, there's no one to make brass at this time. So if you have, you could use any 308 brass and trim them and size them. Um, dies, um, Omega Rifle. That's at their website. You could contact them for dies. They their dies is made by Lee. Lee did a run for a while, but they stopped it. But you could contact Omega. I went with CNH dies because I used the military brass, and um, in case I had to do either, you know, either or, because the Lee dies work with commercial brass. And it won't do. It won't work too well with military brass. That's that's posted on their website also. So that's why I went with CNH. Um, they do make a crimp die, which Lee makes it for Omega rifle. So I have here for the three seven five the crimp die. You can pick this up for Omega rifle. Their page is down on the website for some reason. I don't know why. But you can always contact them because I looked at the Lee website and 
their 375 Raptor section is, is not there. They took it down. So I will contact them. Um, Lee will be cheaper anyways. C and H will be pretty expensive. You're looking at maybe close to $300 in dies. I mean, they're like well-made dies, but they're not cheap. But I love their dies. So um, I went that route because I have option for both commercial or military. And um, that's it I could think of. Okay, so if you have anything else you want to ask me, I'm more than welcome to answer anything you like. All right. All right, guys. Um, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.